Hey guys, this is the weekly update. Uh, we're talking everything about real estate. Honored guest, as always, David Bob from Cross Country Mortgage. My good friend, how are you? Doing great, Peter. How are you? Good morning, you everybody. Getting, are you getting deals closed? That that's that's the simple question in this market. Yes, we are getting deals closed. We're having a really good month, actually. Uh, you know, probably our second best month of closings for the year, uh, which is a good sign. So it is taken, you know, we are getting some people to the finish line, but there are still a lot of people that just still cannot get their deals accepted. Um, so, and more people every day are trying to get pre-approved and get into the market. So it's making, you know, more challenging that more people want to get into this market and still limited inventory. So um, you know, we're still having those challenges and it's going to continue to be that way until inventory breaks. Yeah. And I just don't see that happening. I mean, um, throw out some stats. I mean, I don't have any charts on me. Uh, somebody could fact check me on this if they want, but it's, um, what is it? 50% of people, uh, have more than 50% equity on their home. Uh, if not, uh, completely paid off. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people do have um, equity in their home right now. Um, people that have refinanced, obviously, in the past couple of years, they're um, they're if they're not going to be moving, they're looking to be doing work to their homes right now. So they are looking, obviously, tap into their equity. You know, whether it's line of credits or some other things to obviously can stay in their home because um, some people just don't want to make that transition until maybe rates do come back down and that's hurting the inventory. But uh, an interesting fact you were talking about was just, um, I think in Monmouth County alone, right? For 50% of the homes, I think are over 900,000. I think something like that, that you said. Yeah. So it, somebody, and, and I'll, I'll give kudos to Jacqueline Greco uh, over at Compass. She threw out this stat and I thought it was pretty interesting she was saying that 50% of the homes, homes, not condos, right. not adult communities. Single are, family, yeah. Single family are over 900,000. Um, and, you know, stats don't lie. Um, it's not a good market for, you know, somebody that's looking for a first time home. We're getting it done. Um, we just closed the VA loan, right? Yeah. Uh, we had some issues with the appraisal, but at the end of the day, I just listed something in the same development got, you know, something higher than his three bedroom was for a two bedroom. So yeah, the comps, are just an taking, appraisal. Yeah. It, it, the comps are just taking a little bit longer, but I was so happy to call him to tell him that, Hey, guess what? You know, we're going to have really good comps for you. I just, you know, and again, people get a little deflated um, when the comps aren't there, when they purchase. Right. It's, if you don't buy it, somebody else is willing to buy it. That's why there's 10 offers on the house. Yeah. It really comes down to terms. Um, I, you know, we were talking about this, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you can put down 20%, maybe you only put down 15%, you know, and use it as a buffer in case the house doesn't appraise or just to kind of give you, you know, give the seller more assurances that, you know, you're, you're, you're a legit buyer. You want to move forward. I mean, this is nothing that nothing different in my mind that we dealt with mm -hmm. in the last two years. It's just less inventory. Yeah. I mean, we're um, like you said, from a point, you know, a lot of buyers, what we're hearing is, gosh, you know what I'm, you know, I only feel like this is what it's worth or this is what I'm comfortable with or what I think it is worth. But if you've got, you know, 10, 15, 20 offers, it's, Whatever that one person, one out of those twenty, it's what they what what they're willing to pay for it, right. you know, ultimately. And if it's more or better terms than what unfortunately a client is thinks that that's all it's gonna take, they may not win the bid, you know, and it is um pushing maybe that comfort level for some people, you know, but those people that are pushing it, they're unfortunately, I mean, they're the ones that are winning the homes and they're realizing that you know, this is hopefully, right, no guarantees, but hopefully this is a short-lived term scenario where they'll be able to refinance in a couple of years. And the ones that are not really worried about where the rates are, they're the ones that are winning besides cash offers, right? Yeah. Because, you know, cash is king from that perspective. But 
the people that get it, then when, when yeah, well, what's the rate? They don't care what the rate is. They just want to get the house. They can't refinance a house that they don't own, right? So a lot of times they're just the rates, the rate, you know, and they'll worry about trying to, you know, have better terms in the future and save more money that way. But at least they're doing whatever they can to get that place because they don't want to pay rent or they don't want to live with their in-laws or something of that nature that they have that, um, that burning desire that they have to get that house now because it's so challenging and they don't want prices to keep going up. Well, I mean, you know, we, we go through the scenarios, right? It's like, what what could possibly happen, right? It's, um, you know, the big one for me is prices go down. Or I should say interest rates go down, right? And it just puts more people into the the, the feeding frenzy, right? And it's, I think that there's another stat where it's, what is it? Um, the percentage of people that are paying 4% or less on their mortgage, right? Really high. It's it's super high. I gotta look that one up. Um, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, the majority of people that could refinance, right? Some people may not have been able to, whether it's credit, whether it's you know some other factors, they might not be able to take advantage, you know, during that process. But the majority of people absolutely took advantage during COVID, you know. Right. I don't yeah. have the exact number, but if you're gonna check out that stat, but. 60, 62%. Okay, there you go. That's all. That means, you know, almost 30, yeah, 38%. Yeah, 8%, uh, 82% lower than uh, 5%. That's okay. a, to Redfin as okay. of May uh, of uh, this year. And okay. it's just, it, it's mind boggling because the reason why nobody's selling is because they just, you know, they don't want to pay a higher rate, right? It's even if you're looking at downsides, you know, some people are realizing that. I'm going to be paying the same amount unless you're paying off cash, you know, and it's um, I'm seeing people, you know, it's again, the migration down to Florida. Um, let me, you know, let me pay off whatever credit card debt that I have, um, you know, cash out and I have some equity um, rent out for a year uh, while I'm getting relocated down South. And we have plenty of great agents. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Alexis Silva who just, sent me a referral of a guy that's selling a brick uh, that's moving down to where the rest of his family is down in Florida. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people, I'm, we're seeing a lot of transplants, you know, heading unfortunately out of the great state of New Jersey, um, yeah. you know, Florida, Texas, North Carolina, you know, yeah. the Carolinas, a lot of people are heading down there. Um, you know, just from other opportunity. There's a lot more new construction down there, you know, and, there's still uh, not gazillion, you know, tons of uh, uh, inventory, but there is more, um, you know, just from a perspective of they've got more land available, you know, and you've seen a lot of new construction in those states. Yeah. And I want to give like, you know, again, we're, we're a little gloom and doom right now if you're a buyer, but the reality is like, we're still closing deals. You were talking about having the best month. I closed two deals. I just went under contract on two more deals. One of them was a buyer. He had gone through the the painful task of making about 12 offers on houses and being the bridesmaid a couple of times. And uh -huh. finally, you know, we just got, you know, we found the best house uh -huh. um, for, you know, out of all the houses that we made an offer on, this is the best house. And mm -hmm. he's through the roof, right? And it's kind of like, don't give up because um, you never know. The, the one house that you don't think you're going to get, you might get. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely not all doom and gloom. I mean, I had a, some really good success stories, right? I had someone they made, they made 20 offers, literally, on houses. Right. Um, the 19th place that they made an offer on, they were second in line. Their 20th offer got rejected. The 19th offer came back to them because that buyer backed out. Now, these people were they were the second best offer but their terms were only three percent down and they were getting the state grant of fifteen thousand dollars got that accepted got it closed in relatively in about 30 31 days with the state grant program it was fantastic the client was ecstatic um actually got part of his upfront deposit back because it covered everything so good a good win on that and um you know, a couple other clients that had, you know, 10, 15 offers during the process ended up closing them last week. And another person she's been looking for a year and a half 
she just got an, an offer accepted uh, and it's in attorney review yesterday. So there are good things happening. Um, it's just, it, it's taking longer sometimes for these buyers, unfortunately, because there's just so many clients out there looking. And, and listen, you know, this is what I'm telling, like I'm, I'm caught the car, the real estate carousel, everybody's moving now. Um, and it's just kind of funny because, you know, it's, th there's deals being done. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not having the best year of my life, but I'm not having a bad year either. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reality is like, I'm, I feel like I'm helping, you know, whereas even the investors are just pumping the brakes a little bit, but the rest of it is pretty good. And, you know, th there's, there's a lot of off market stuff, as they say, right. Um, people that are thinking about selling, you know, they're, they're getting their kids involved and, uh, uh, we, we got a special guest here. My, my daughter's coming in. Oh, Say, all right. Hold School's on. over. Hello. School's out for summer. <laughs> so, yep. so anyway, um, you know, it's just, you know, stay positive. I think the market's just fine. I think it's healthy that it's this way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it gets rid of a lot of the riffraff, right? You know, mm -hmm. people that are looking to sell, they're real. People that are looking to buy, they're real. So it's a, it's a good market. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, at some point in time, remember, it's not going to be this way forever. It's just when's that breaking point going to happen? I mean, nobody knows, right? It's not happening overnight. That's for sure. Well, you we know, it, we, we're we in this. For, we're in this for the long haul. We so, had a conversation before COVID. The market was going to turn then. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it, no matter what, obviously, you know, the volatility is absolutely continuing. You know, on. Um, the real estate and the mortgage side, right? Um, you know, rates are still all over the place. You know, so, they are. Um, so are you, you know, are you still seeing some like um, people trying to do, you know, like twenty year loans or like some some sort of like f uh, variable rate type stuff or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, people are looking for adjustable rate mortgages. People are looking for 30 year fixed, obviously 15 or 20. I mean, maybe a little lower rate, obviously still, buy a higher, still a higher payment. Um, you know, but I, people are just really trying to get creative in any way to, to make it work and get in, but they realize that, you know, there's a very high probability in the next 12 to 48 months, there's going to be a, ref a refinance opportunity, right? And somewhere in between, we have no idea if and when it's going to happen, you know, but they'll take advantage of it and save money, you know, when it's available. Um, you know, the markets are still very risky uh, for uh, those adjustable rate mortgages, even jumbo financing right now. Rates are not as attractive as, um, you know, as you would may think. Uh, I was talking to some pretty savvy people last, you know, a couple of days and uh, they're just saying, I think the. Um, the commercial space that a lot of the institutions have money tied up in right now are also causing the risk layers in the high volatility of interest rates because, you know, a lot of, you know, um, office space and leases, people are trying to get out of their leases. People are trying to do different things where, you know, the large institutions that have financing, like I said, on these, on these units and spaces, if they're, um, if they don't have full tenant utilization, you know, it makes their, you know, their assets and things of that nature, you know, a little more risky, which in turn, if they're lending off of, you know, the securitization of that, um, that could, you know, lead to continuation of, you know, just volatile rates. Right. And uh, I'm going to, uh, let's, uh, I know you got a hard stop today. Um, yeah. So I appreciate your time, but uh, in, in just kind of let to get this in, I just got off of, um, I have a joint venture with a business broker mm -hmm. and, you know, he's predicting four to five years of, you know, you're going to see a lot of businesses going to be prime opportunity. Uh, the real estate market, you know, if you're looking for investment opportunities, there's good businesses that are just, you know, they're, they're priced out or, you know, people are getting burnt out um, because they can't keep up with this, mm -hmm. but by no means does that mean that they're not good businesses. Um yeah. So, you know, we're going to be doing a home seller seminar. I definitely want to plug that. It's either going to be on the uh, July 10th or the 17th. We'll come out with more notes. Love to have you there as well, Dave. Um, okay. 
you know, because we really want to put together an exceptional team just to answer any questions that they might have. Sure. Uh, how do people get in contact with you? We'll, we'll put this on the bottom, but. Uh, yeah, uh, give me a buzz, shout, text uh, 732-853-4969 or email david.baum at ccm.com. All right, man. I appreciate your time and I'll catch up with you next week. All right, bud. Thank you. All right. Take care. Peter. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks.